All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. It's Christmas Eve. Let's put an edge on this chopper, shall we? And see what we can do with that. Thanks for being here, everybody. Let's get to it.
Well, okay guys, we got her done. It's kind of late last night when I got done doing the edge and then I did a little more buffing on the blade and all of that. So uh, I didn't get a closing done, but um, here she is. I think that handle came out looking really swell. Those scale liners really set everything off. They came out nice and even. I love these mosaic pins in the handle here. If we can get the camera to focus on them at all. And of course we can't really, but uh, there you can kind of see the mosaic pattern in them. Uh, I wasn't gonna shine this blade up this much but I left it, you know, kind of a matte finish like you saw in the last video, but we we got this brass all polished up real nice. And with that brass shining like it is, and the wood in that handle come out so nice, um, it kind of made the blade look a little dull. So I hit the blade on the buffer some more and uh, shined it up a little better. I kind of have a problem with that, you know, I like to, I like to, uh, I get going on that and then I just, I, it's like a painter, it's never finished, you know, I don't, I don't want to quit, so, she's really sharp, it will slice a piece of paper like nobody's business, uh, I shaved the hair off of my arm with it, yesterday, you can make some pretty fine little shaves with it like this. Problem with a knife this thick, you know, with that thick of a bevel on it, is if you try to cut too deep into the paper, what it does is it cuts like a razor until the paper gets up here wider on the bevel, and then it just spreads the paper apart and it wants to rip, so it, it's kind of deceiving. It makes it look like the knife isn't as sharp as it really is. But I'm here to tell you, I can push this knife through this paper without even having to slide it. That's pretty doggone sharp when you can just push it through and not actually be slicing, just pushing it straight through. You gotta slide it a little bit to get it started. But once you get it started, I can just push it through right on the same spot so uh, it'll really slice without any trouble it's um, it's extremely dangerously sharp that'll do a job on anything you want to use it on so it came out really good I'm very happy with it we got a lot more shine in that blade than I intended to but it uh, I wasn't thinking about the brass you know and that brass shined up so nicely um, that it made the blade look dull so I had to work on the blade some more do a little more buffing on that but uh, I'm extremely happy with how this knife came out. Uh, like we said, competition chopper, it's 10 inches from here to here, and then a five inch handle. So it's right in the parameters of a competition chopper. We put us a lanyard hole back here, uh, where I've got some leather, uh, like boot, boot tie type leather. I'm gonna tie a, a lanyard on there. But there she is, all done. Uh, excuse me. It's been a long time coming, getting this blade finished. Uh, I forged this blade out six months ago, and uh, nine videos later, here we are. This is number nine, the, the final video. And I'm gonna throw up a little video uh, chopping down this tree out front. We're gonna chop down the tree and then we're gonna come in 
and uh, without in one shot we're gonna chop down the tree swing the camera around I'm gonna cut a bunch of water bottles in half so just to show you how it'll retain an edge and everything but that came out really well that's one big hefty knife I mean you can see up here next to my big head how big this thing is and it's just uh, it's actually exceeded my expectations for for uh, the knife I wanted, I expected to make. So I'm extremely happy with it. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me make that thing. This video right here is number nine. Um, and I guess when I do the video of chopping the tree down out here and slicing a few water bottles, that'll just be a little short video, but we'll just call that 10. Uh, but it's really good to have that done. It's been a long project. I'm gonna start on a buoy knife, I think, this weekend. I ordered some 1095, I've never worked with that. I wanna give that a shot. Uh, but the bars that I ordered are pretty much the thickness and the size that I want them. So there won't be any forging. Uh, I'm just gonna do stock removal on this buoy knife and harden it you know and temper it and all that but we just won't be pounding it out on the anvil because there's really no pounding to do i'll draw out a template of the knife that i want to make we'll draw the blade out on the steel we'll cut that out pretty much or grind what we can't cut and you know we'll cut it out to a rough sh the rough shape that we want and then we'll get on the grinder and we'll let the grinder do the work and we'll grind it to to, to profile it the way we want it haven't decided yet if I'm going to do full tang or a hidden tang. You almost kind of have to do a full tang if you want to put a guard and a, and a pommel on it, which I do want to do. And if I'm going to do that, I could use the brass that I have, but uh, the problem with the brass is I'd like to kind of do an S shape uh, kind of an S-shaped guard and so I'm not gonna I, it's too thin to do that with you can't really bend brass so I'm probably gonna end up making that out of uh, aluminum alloy from that truck wheel that I have so I can cut out a thick enough piece of that that I can shape it how I want to uh, make it come out the way I want it to so probably do the aluminum alloy on the guard and the pommel on that one. Not sure what we're going to do for scale liners yet. Uh, for a or, uh, for the scales, I thought about doing a stacked leather scale. Maybe stacking like two or three pieces of uh, leather and then a piece of micarta and then a few more pieces of leather and micarta. Maybe something along that line. Or I may do wood. Uh, it's kind of a pain to do wood because you've got to drill down into it to um, to fit your tang in and it's just hard to get those right and I don't know I just I've been kind of wrestling with it but the gears are turning we're working on it so uh, at any rate we'll think about that got the steel ordered uh, I want to make two Bowie knives. I want to make one for each one of my sons. So, um, I may end up doing a third one for my, for my son-in-law also, I'm thinking. Um, and I've got a couple of hunting knives. A friend at work wants me to build him two hunting knives for he and his daughter. Uh, but they're not going to be anything extravagant. They're just going to be like a five and a half or a six inch blade straight wooden handle I'll throw some scale liners on it probably because I just like that look uh, but they're not going to be anything fancy there'll be no brass or aluminum or any of that kind of stuff they're just going to be handle scales uh, but he wants me to make them to kind of match which is going to be kind of hard to do um, but I may just do stock removal on those too because stock removal I can almost make them perfectly identical. Forging is a whole nother story because it's so hard to forge two knives 
that come out really even and I know you can even them up on the grinder to a degree but your thickness and everything you know if I had a surface grinder it would make things a lot easier but it's kind of hit and miss on the belt grinder so I have to just put a magnet on my steel so that I can run it on the planting like this and you can never get it perfectly flat you know no matter how hard you try you're, you're always putting a little bit of pressure one way or the other and so the, it's just really hard to get everything to come out even doing that I mean I've I've come to where I've gotten pretty good at it that's how we squared that knife up but I'll tell you it's it's pretty meticulous it's a lot of work and to get two of them exact I'll probably do stock removal on those two uh, so we may get a couple of projects going here all at once. Um, but anyway, that's what's coming up. Look for that and, and a video of us chopping down the tree with that, with that competition chopper. And then we're gonna slice some water bottles. I'll line up five or six water bottles and just slice them all in half to show how well that thing retains an edge after chopping a tree down. So. Uh, that ought to be pretty interesting and uh, for right now I mean uh, that's all the irons we've got in the fire I think that's enough for the time being we need to work on this little monster truck still but I've got a lot of time to get that done that doesn't need to be done until uh, spring early summer when we get ready to go out to the dunes still got work to do on the sand rail too so uh, we got plenty of projects to do in this shop this winter so i hope you guys will all stick around and watch i really appreciate you watching my videos i hope you've enjoyed this series of videos i'm going to try to put this whole series together because this is like number nine part nine chopping the tree down will be like part ten uh unless i just decide to do a separate little video about that just going to be a, a couple of minutes long. It's just going to show me whacking that tree, knocking it down, and then slicing some water bottles and call it good. So, uh, so we'll probably just make that a separate little video. Um, I don't know. I, well, I kind of need to associate it with these to, to show that the end result and how well the blade holds up. So, so it'll probably be number 10 of this series. But I want to put these together like in a playlist or something. There's a way that you can do that on YouTube. So when you watch the first video, it automatically kicks you to the next, the next, the next, and right down the series. So people don't have to go search for these videos, you know, to go back and watch from the beginning. So, uh, guys, thanks again for being here. Get out to your shop and do something. Always wear your safety gear, your face shield, your mask, gloves on your hands. If you're doing something that you could injure a hand, and uh, just take care uh, and be cautious. Try to try to stay safe when you're working in your shop, but get out to your shop and do something. Hell, just clean it. You know your shop's a mess, so get out there and clean it up. And uh, we'll probably see you this weekend when we begin working on a Bowie knife. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.